you can build a no-code AI-powered thinking and reasoning app with Bubble using the new Claude 3.7 uh, model from Anthropic and I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this video. I'm Matt. I've been building apps on Bubble since 2017. Uh, I do one-to-one -one coaching each week. You can find out more about that on our website. And if you want to really accelerate your Bubble progress, that is also a good reason to check out our website because we've got a library of hundreds of Bubble videos. We've got courses all intermixed, all queryable with AI. So save yourself hunting for the right video on YouTube because you'll find it quicker on our website. Let's dive in. I'm going to make this not a guide to UI design. I'm simply going to make it rough and ready, uh, which is that we're going to be sending a message and getting a response back from Claude and looking at how that response changes using uh, thinking with Claude 3.5. So let's add in a multi-line input because we'll need an input for our user. And then let's add in a button. If you want to learn about Bubble uh, UI design, you should check out our other videos on our website, link in the description. Um, but I'm just gonna say send message. And then I'm gonna add in some text because I want to be able to show the response. Um, right, and the way that I'm gonna have the response shown is I'm not saving it to the database. I just will use a custom state. Custom states are like an on-page variable. Uh, if you refresh the page, you lose the data in the custom state, but that's perfect for now. So I'll say response text. Uh, oh, you can add a custom state to any element on the page. I like to add it to the page itself. Otherwise, I forget where I've put them. Uh, so you just saw me make a custom state there. And then I just print the custom state's value. So here's my page. Notice it's what it's called. It's called Claude 37. Claude 37. There's my custom state. So now any text that I put in the custom state is going to be shown in this text box below. Um, right, let's head over to the uh, Anthropic documentation because we're going to be taking this and I'm going to be teaching you how we can build it in the Bubble API connector. And then once you get to grips with the Bubble API connector, you can literally connect to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other external services, whether that's AI, transcription, PDF generation, you name it, you can do it with an API. So uh, let's go back into our Bubble app and I'm going to go into plugins. And we need the API connector. If you don't see it, you need to add it in from the plugin directory and you can just search for it. And then you get an idea of basically how, uh, not bloated, but how many uh, demos I've done with this app. We're gonna add Claude in right at the bottom. So I'm gonna name it Claude. And then we need to authenticate our call. And this is a little bit like using a password, particularly for a paid API, which most APIs are when you, you get to, to using them quite a bit. Uh, they need to know who to attach that billing to. And so you wanna ensure that only what you do with your account is billed to you and other people can't act, do things and it gets billed to you. So it's like a password. And so it's known as an API key or a private key. And that goes in the header. Um, and the reason I know that is because here is what we're translating into the API connector. And so it says X API key and then the Anthropic API key. Now you would find that in your account, but the key name is X API key. And then I'm gonna put in my API key, which I prepared earlier. And I will, of course, even though I've got it hidden, uh, API keys should be treated like a password. So I will be deleting this API key before publishing this video. Um, now there are a number of shared headers and this will vary depending on the API that you're using. Uh, so for Anthropic, we need a header content type application JSON. Now this is actually in by default. It didn't used to be a bubble, but it has been now for probably about a year. Uh, so I don't need to add that in, but I do need to add in this one here to declare the version that I'm using. Uh, so I paste that in and I've simply pasted it all in one go so that I can add it uh, in without flicking backwards and forwards. So it is uh, Anthropic version, no space, and then there's no space at the start, no space at the end, perfect. And then we start adding in our actual API calls. So I'm gonna call this one send message. And in Bubble, there's two types of API calls. There's data, that's more appropriate for like on-page load if you're showing weather. This isn't on-page load, this is for if a user clicks a button, and so that is an action in the workflow. Uh, then if we go back, let's put more pieces together. Here is our endpoint, so I copy that. Uh, and it is of type post. And 
most of the time, if you're sending a lot of data, if you need kind of multiple parts to it, it's going to be post. Uh, but a good APR documentation is going to look very similar to, like this, and you just are looking for the right bits to interpret it. Uh, so we change this to post, and I paste in the endpoints there. Perfect. Oh, we're about halfway through. Uh, so now to actually send the message, it's this part here. So this is the data or the body of the API call. Notice I've not selected the uh, quote marks. So I'm going to copy that and paste it into here. So the model is uh, 3.7. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then the message is just hello world. And I'm going to initialize the call now. And that's going to check that I've not made any mistakes. And it's also going to teach Bobble the structure of the response that is going to come back uh, from the Anthropic API. So let's initialize the call. I normally get an error. It's not by now if, if it didn't work, if like, the, your API key wasn't working. Another common error is that you've not put any uh, uh, any balance in your account. I think that's probably going to depend on your region and account, ty uh, account type. Uh, so this is what comes back. And Bubble is really good at identifying the different parts that come back. Uh, so we can pretty much ignore all of this apart from we get back content as a list and here is the response. And we can also look at the raw output. So content and here's the response. So it's just responding to hello world in a friendly way. So I'm going to click save. Now we're going to add in the thinking part. So if I go back to uh, the Anthropic documentation, we can scroll all the way down and because these are all additional things that you can do. Uh, I will just point out that temperature does not work with thinking, but we're going to add in thinking. Um, and so I'm actually going to go through to this page because it gives a bit more detail. So here's a, another uh, API call. Um, example and this time I'm going to add in thinking so I'm going to copy this bit so thinking is an object with the keys uh, type and budget uh, so I'm going to go back and this is where you get a little bit used to uh, JSON syntax so uh, I need a comma between these lines line three and four and I need a comma at the end of line seven. You put commas between things in JSON. Notice there's not a comma. Uh, it, you don't just end every line with a comma. Commas only go between things. Now I know that I'm gonna get an error here because my uh, thinking budget is larger than my overall budget. So I'm gonna just change this up to 4,000. 4, I'm gonna change this just to 1,000. Also notice that in JSON, uh, uh, text strings are in uh, quote marks where speech marks whereas numbers uh, at least the whole numbers oh don't don't test me on decimals I'm not sure but they're not in speech marks um, right now I just need to make this a little bit more uh, make it think so I'm gonna say uh, plan a, a seven day trip to London uh, for uh, some yeah just say just I think this is going to work. I'm now going to reinitialize the call. And this bit is actually really important. Not only is it going to check have I made a mistake or not, but the response is going to be different because I've enabled thinking. And we already saw that that is likely to happen because we get back content. Once more, content is a list and it splits out almost like separate messages, the thinking part and the text part. So if we wanted to show the thinking to our user, we would need to present this bit. But if we want to show the final output, we would only be showing this bit. Let's see if our demo app gets to the same place. Uh, your input should be greater. Your OK, so the thinking budget needs to be fine. There we go. That's working. And if you've seen, uh, so you can't stream text straight into Bubble, you have to basically wait for the whole response. But if you've seen, uh, if you're using ChatGPT or you're using uh, Claude, you'll see the thinking, it's actually writing. It's writing, it's writing, it's writing, and it's going over and over the process it needs to complete the objective you've given it. Uh, so here we go, we get back our thinking, uh, and this is how it thought about the question or command that we asked. And then here is our output. One other interesting thing to notice is that the output, at least from OpenAI and Claude, they're the LLMs that are used the most, is it responds, when it responds in rich text, it responds in Markdown. Now you can find plugins that convert Markdown into uh, HTML, and then you could custom style that HTML in your bubble app with a little bit of CSS. Again, we've got videos on that. Uh, but if you wanted it to respond in, in rich, basic, minimal rich text, 
uh, that Bubble could display, uh, you would ask for it in BB code because it's text in Bubble in BB code is rendered. So for example, bold, italic, you can change the color, you can change the font family, you can do uh, bullet points, you can do numbered lists, you would do all of that in BB code. And that's just a, something from old internet forum days is my understanding. So I'm gonna save this uh, because it's Bubble needs to learn this new structure. And now let's actually plug it into a workflow and print our answer. Uh, but first of all, we need to make part of this dynamic. And so the query our user is this bit. Notice that I include the speech marks because I'm going to put the speech marks back in in the workflow because I need to JSON safe it. JSON safe is the process where imagine the user put in their query something like plan A uh, seven day, uh, for example, they said fantastic trip like that. This is going to cause a JSON syntax error because uh, how does uh, the app know? Is it this? Is that the message? Or is this the message? What's code and what's text? So you need to escape the special characters and we can get Bubble to do that for ourselves by using JSON safe. So let's get rid of this and we'll just say message. I'm using triangle brackets because in this particular part of the Bubble API connector, triangle brackets are how we add in dynamic values. Uh, it's not private. Private is referring to is this data that you want to uh, protect from your users, the people who are using your app through your web browser. Now, your user has supplied this message, so there's no point making it private. But an example of something that we do want to be private is our API key. Um, so now that that's uh, unticked and that making sure that this is an action, I can go in and I can add in a workflow. So on my button, I'm going to say add workflow and then I'm going to search for Claude. And oh, there's going to be a number of them here because I've done many Claude demos. Let's call this Claude uh, 3.7. There we go. So this is the one. It's added in here because it's been succe successfully initialized. It is an action in my API connector. And here's my message. Uh, so I'm going to take the multi-line input and then let's not forget JSON safe. Perfect. Now we want to show the response. So I'm going to use set state because this is how we can put text from the response of step one into our custom state. I find my custom state. Remember that's on my page response. And this is where this deviates because of the thinking element compared to any other tutorials that I've done with Claude, which is, uh, can you remember where the actual text coming back is found? It is in the second or the last part of content. So I go results, content. And now normally, if you're not using thinking, you just go first item because it's not a list that comes back. Um, it, it it could be a list you could ask for, you could be using thinking, you could be asking for three versions to come back using the end parameter. Check that out in the documentation if you're unsure. But this time we actually want the last items text. Uh, so now if we go and we actually preview this, last item is text, we can see how it works. Hopefully it will work. Okay, let's give it a test. We'll, we'll use the same prompt. In fact, we'll say uh, plan a seven day trip in Paris. I'm gonna click send message. And I've not added in anything extra here. It really is quite minimal. There is a loading bar going across the top. Now, of course, Bubble doesn't actually know how long it's gonna take for Claude to respond and complete its response. So if you wanna make this a really good user experience, improve your UX, uh, you could add in a Lottie animation or a CSS uh, loader, and you could run this in the back end workflow. Again, we've got videos commenting uh, covering that. Now, uh, the reason it's not showing all of it is because if I go back into my app, uh, I have made this really rough. Ideally, you should be using rows and columns. So actually, it's just run out of space here. If I was using rows and columns, uh, then it's much more easy to make the height adaptable. But the point is that we get back the response. Now, let me just demonstrate how we would save the thinking or at least display the thinking to our users. So let's add in another text box here. And I'd add in a custom state. And I'd call this one thinking. And then I print my thinking here. So from the custom state thinking, 
Cool, and then I go back to my workflow and I can set, I don't, I don't need another action, I can set thinking here. So whereas the output, the response is last, let's copy this, so I'm right clicking on it, right clicking in the click um, placeholder, I can say first items, now, is it text? I think it's thinking. Uh, because and I can check that because I go back to my API connect and I go manual. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's actually thinking there isn't text. So content is a list. The first item in the list has type thinking and signature, whereas the second item in the list has just just text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's go back here. And we'll try again. And a seven day uh, trip to, uh, let's go Berlin this time. Okay, remember you can make the, the loading much better, but we're just waiting for Claude to write its amazing response. There we go. So if you wanted to keep track of the thinking, that's how you can extract the thinking. And you could, of course, be saving both of these into the database. Once more, we've got videos covering how to save. Uh, so well, we've got many AI videos, but saving stuff to the database, we've got that covered too. So if you've got any questions, you made it this far on this video, it'd be great if you could give us a subscribe and a thumbs up. And of course, leave those questions down in the comments.